Hey math students, this is uh, another video where I'm going to spare you my face and I'm going to share with you my uh, my uh, computer screen instead. And we're talking some more trigonometry. We have here an angle that's in standard position. Okay, that means the initial side is going out here on the x-axis and our terminal side is going, well, wherever we want it to go, all right? And uh, I'm just going to do a little review first. Uh, if you remember, if you have, if your terminal side is going through a point here, and we're just calling it the point x, y, then we can always draw a little triangle like this, where this horizontal movement is, this horizontal side is x, this vertical side is y, and so you end up with uh, these three ratios. Uh, the sine of, uh, of theta, remember theta is this angle down here, the sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse, which is y over, and we're calling this r, the, uh, and you'll see why we call it r in just a second. Uh, it's the distance from the uh, origin up to the point x, y. Uh, the cosine is this side, right, is uh, x over r, and the tangent is y over x, okay? And again, this is review. We've seen this before. Um, and let's go ahead and... Uh, be specific that uh, x squared plus y squared is r squared because of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So that's all fine and good. And now let's say this point x, y is going to be on the unit circle. Remember the unit circle? It's the circle whose center is 0, 0 and the radius is 1. Okay? So x, y is just some point. It doesn't have to be in quadrant 1. It could be in 2, 3, or 4. I'm leaving it quadrant one just because that's what I'm used to, but it could be anywhere. Um, so now, if it's on the unit circle, what that means is the radius of that circle is one, and that's my hypotenuse. That's why we're calling it R for radius. So my hypotenuse is one, and that means the sine is just Y over one. The cosine is X over one, and X squared plus Y squared is merely one. So let's go ahead and fix those ratios and fix this thing down here. There we go. So the sine is y, the cosine is x, and the tangent is y over x still. And now it's very obvious to see that uh, that's the sine divided by the cosine. Now, down here, this uh, the Pythagorean theorem tells us x squared plus y squared is 1. and uh, But remember, x is the cosine and y is the sine. So what that means is my sine squared plus my cosine squared equals 1. Huh. This is true for any angle at all. So that's something you might want to you might want to hang on to, put that in your back pocket because that's going to come in handy in the future. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, "Why why did he write sine squared? It should be the sine of theta squared." Yeah, I know. I know. We sh we really should write it that way, but I'm not in charge of notation. I'm just a lowly teacher. So, sine squared of theta means sine of theta squared. Once I'm in charge, let me tell you, this notation is going to be totally different. It's going to be, it's going to make sense. But for right now, this is just kind of what we have to deal with. Okay. So for any angle, for any angle at all, if you look at the point where that angle intersects the unit circle, the x coordinate is going to give you the cosine of that angle. The y coordinate is going to give you the sine of the angle. Y divided by x is going to get you the tangent of the angle. And for any angle at all, if you take the sine squared plus the cosine squared, you get 1. Okay? So, now, new topic. Uh, let's look at uh, just an angle. And this time it is important that we keep the angle in quadrant 1. Okay? For every angle that's in quadrant 1, there are three other angles that are in uh, that these, these uh, dotted red uh, segments here. There are three other angles, one in, ang in quadrant 2, one in quadrant 3, one in quadrant 4, that correspond to this angle here. And you can see how they correspond. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice and symmetric, okay? The one in quadrant 2 is merely the quadrant 1 angle uh, reflected over the y-axis. The one in quadrant 4 is our original angle reflected over the x-axis. The one in quadrant 3 is our original angle rotated half a circle around the origin. Okay, now what's interesting about this is that the sine and cosine of all four of these angles are going to be the same numbers. The only thing that will be different is whether they're positive or negative, but the magnitude will be exactly the same, okay? And uh, 
not to sound like an old man or anything, but I kind of am. So uh, back in my day, when I was a kid, we would uh, uh, we didn't have calculators. And so finding a sine and cosine meant you had to go look it up in a table. Well, the table just went from zero to 90 degrees. So if I had another angle that I had to find the sine and cosine of, I would have to find this angle over here, my angle in quadrant one. And this is called the reference angle, okay? So the, the angle in quadrant one is the reference angle for the other three angles. It's also the reference angle for itself. So it's actually the reference angle for all four of those angles. Every angle has a reference angle, and that angle is always in quadrant one. So let me give you a couple of uh, uh, examples here. First example, let theta be 125 degrees. So here it is, 125 degrees. And let's say we're back in the old days, we're back in the early 70s or so, and uh, we want to know what the sine and cosine of 125 degrees are. Well, what we do is we find the reference angle. Now, how do we find that reference angle? Well, think about it. 125 degrees is this angle to the, uh, it's that obtuse angle, okay? Which means this angle over here, which would complete uh, basically the difference from 125 to 180 is going to be our reference angle, okay? Because, because of the symmetry of the, of the picture there. So what you do is you just find the supplementary angle. Just take 180 minus 125 and you get 55. And now it's going to have the exact same sign and it's going to have the same cosine, only this one's going to be negative. So the cosine of 125 is the negative cosine of 55 degrees and the sine of 125 is exactly the same as the sine of 55 degrees. And sure enough, when we look at the uh, coordinates of those points, we'll see that that is absolutely true. And you can grab a calculator right now and check it yourself and make sure that I'm not uh, telling you stories. Okay, let's look at another one. Uh, this time our angle is 13 pi over 12. Ooh, we're speaking in radians, all right. So 13 pi over, pi over 12 puts us in quadrant three. Okay, remember, pi is 180 degrees. That's a straight angle. So this is a little bit more than pi. So 13 pi over 12 puts us over here. We want to find the reference angle. So what do we do? We subtract half of a circle. Well, when you're speaking in radians, half of a circle is pi. So 13 pi over 12 minus pi, that would be 12 pi over 12, gives you 1 pi over 12. And sure enough, the cosine of 13 pi over 12 is just the negative cosine of pi over 12. The sine of 13 pi over 12 is just the negative sine of uh, pi over 12. Uh, both of them are negative because we're in quadrant three and both the x coordinate and the y coordinate are uh, negative in quadrant three. Let's look at another one. Uh, this time our example is 300 degrees. So down here, 300 degrees. And I want to find my reference angle. Well, I know I'm just going to flip it over the, uh, the x-axis. So how do I find the measurement then? Well, this angle here, in, in other words, what would take to complete a whole circle is going to be the same as this angle right here. And this angle right here is just going to be from 300 to 360. That's a 60 degree angle. So this angle must also be a 60 degree angle. Okay. So what do I find out? I find out that the cosine of 300 is exactly the same as the cosine of 60. The sine of 300 is merely the negative sine of 60 degrees, okay? Cosine of 60 degrees is, hey, I remember this one. It's, uh, it's one half, yeah, from the special triangles, okay? That means the cosine of 300 must also be one half. And the sine of 60 is root three over two, again, from the special triangles. So that means that the sine of 300 must be negative root 3 over 2. Okay? So, in case you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time writing this down. Okay, look. Just take a screenshot of this, all right? What does it say? It says, okay, you got yourself an angle, all right? Uh, first off, find the coterminal angle. Find the coterminal angle of your angle that's between 0 and 360. 360. Just in case your angle happens to be negative or greater than 360 degrees, get it within uh, that, uh, um, uh, that interval. And if you're thinking, well, how do I do that? It's a coterminal angle, y'all. Just either add or subtract 360 degrees until you're in that interval. Okay? 
then if you are now in quadrant one, well, that is your reference angle, okay? If uh, the angle that you have, your, uh, uh, this angle between zero and 360, which we're calling theta, if that is in quadrant two, then you take the supplementary angle. You take 180 degrees minus theta. If it's in quadrant three, then you subtract 180 degrees from theta. And finally, if it's in quadrant four, you take a whole circle, 360 degrees, and you subtract, th subtract theta from that, and that will get you your reference angle, okay? So in blue, this is what you do if your angle is in degrees. Over here in purple, it's the exact same thing. I've just translated it to radians, but it says the exact same thing, okay? So what do I want you to take from this video? Uh, the unit circle, okay? The coordinates of the points on the unit circle give you the, uh, the, sine, the cosine and sine of that angle. The x-coordinate is the cosine, the y-coordinate is the sine of the angle. I'm reminding you, you already knew this, but I'm reminding you that the tangent of theta is the sine divided by the cosine. And I'm also pointing out that the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals 1. Okay? Very, very important uh, fun fact there. And then finally, reference angles. What a reference angle is and sort of the purpose of reference angles. That's what I want you to take away from this video. All right? I will uh, see you at the next video. I hope this helped.